How's everyone doing tonight? Tonight, today? Um, how many of you is this your first TED Talk? OK, me too. And I figure if I'm going to ask you guys to listen to me, I think we should get to know each other a little bit better, right? So this is me. <laughs> a long time ago in a land kind of far away. Let's get to a little bit more personal information, though. My parents are divorced. My mother was a drug addict who had to fight not only with her methamphetamine addiction, but with the sufferings of bipolar disorder. I myself have an addiction. It's to Starbucks. <laughs> I haven't bought new socks in about two years. I am an Eagle Scout. I am for gays being both scouts and scout leaders. I am for gay marriage. I am for the death penalty. No, I'm not. I'm against the death penalty. OK. Haven't made up my mind yet. A couple years ago, I was laid off from a six-figure job, lost my house, went into a significant amount of debt, thousands upon thousands of dollars. My credit score, coming back, 695. You guys want to loan me some money? I don't know. Um, that's me. You guys feel like you know me a little bit better now? Yeah? Well, all of this information, very personal information, information I wouldn't even put on an online dating profile. Shannon, are you out there? I don't have an online dating profile. <clears throat> is information that is known by and used by advertisers to put targeted advertising in front of me to let me know, hey, Aaron, buy some new socks. It's about time. So how do they know this information? <laughs> Does Macy's have video cameras in the lawn gnomes that every time I walk by are like, yeah, fashion sense, not so much. <laughs> no, they know this information because I have gone around, primarily online, buying things. I've gone around online doing things in exchange, not necessarily for money, but for privacy, for information about myself. Every time I use my Starbucks card, every time I go on Gmail, every time I like something on Facebook, data is being collected about me. And what do I get from that data? Well, let's, let's back up one second and talk a little bit about this concept. I call it the privacy tax. You sign up for something for free, your Safeway card, many of the online services you use. Remember, these are things that are free for you to use. You use that free service and data is collected about you and they create a profile of who you are. Now here's the big thing. Advertisers come in and they pay not to get that information. Facebook doesn't sell them a database that says, hey, John Smith, age 42, likes action movies, needs to go to the grocery store. No, they sell this information in the form of targeting. Targeted advertisements. These targeted advertisements are bought by the businesses and are what fund all of that free stuff. Some of the largest companies in the world utilize the privacy tax to make the majority of their money. 85% of Facebook's revenue, over $3 billion, billion with a B, made primarily from the sale of advertising. Now Google, $37.9 billion, 96% of their revenue, one of the largest companies on earth, not selling physical things, but selling and making money from the privacy tax. Now, what are you getting from this? Well, all of this free stuff. 
Do you want to pay for Facebook? Do you want to pay for Gmail? All of these things that you're getting, you're consuming for free in exchange for that scary concept of privacy. Now, these are things that we as consumers use and take for granted every day that are very easy for us to access. However, in order to access this, we need something. We need a data connection. That data connection is what connects that device that's in your hand to the invisible internet that is all around us. That data connection is what allows consumers to access all of the free things that we are taking advantage of each and every day. And I believe that businesses should stop charging us for that data and just let that data loose on the world. And I believe this because at this point in history, more people on Earth have access to devices that will allow them to connect to this information than at any other time in existence. But they're not. In poor areas across the country, we find data-capable phones are being used for text messages, they're being used for phone calls, but they're not being used for data. Why is this? Well, cell phones are cheap. They pretty much give them to you. You're okay with signing a couple year agreement, walk in, they'll pretty much hand you a phone. But data, data is expensive. Data is going to cost you $40, $50, $60 a month just to get access to all of the information out there. Now, why does that matter? Why do we care about giving those less fortunate th than us access to mobile data? What if data was free? How could the quality of life of the poor get better? Wikipedia has over, if you put Wikipedia into print, you would find that it takes over 2,000 volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica to fill up all of the information in Wikipedia. Now, for all of you college students out here right now, Wiki, uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica was a book. <laughs> You'd buy it, it had information in it. You didn't go online. The Khan Academy, an online learning academy that teaches science, math, computer programming skills, has served up to over 240 million free lessons to the public. All you have to do is be able to access it. The poor can bring themselves out of poverty through the use of data. Access to not only this information where they can teach themselves skills, but access also to commerce platforms where they can use those skills and make money off of them, bring themselves up to a point where they themselves are consumers that are paying taxes, that are able to pay that privacy tax. Now, giving people access to the web is like teaching someone how to fish. And I'm going to put a little big cliche out here. Give them the fish, what do they get? They get a full stomach. Give them the fishing pole, and what do they get? They get access to Wikipedia online, right? So, people have come to me and said, Aaron, if you give people free access, aren't they going to abuse it? Aren't they going to play Angry Birds, surf porn, all of these things that aren't really going to help? And I said, well, you know what? That's a very first world problem to have, isn't it? Because if you put a starving mother and her children in front of a fishing pole and a video game console, I can bet you that she is going to grab that fishing pole and head to the lake. And you know what? Her kids are probably going to grab the Xbox and go play some video games, which is going to give her the time that she needs to go do that. <clears throat> There's a problem in this. The poor are often too poor to pay the privacy tax. If you are a company that makes your revenue off of putting products in front of people and getting them to click and purchase, there is no market for you 
in the poor? Or is there? How do we get to a system from which this unseen but highly valuable data, and we're talking billions and billions of dollars being spent on data, goes from the hands of the mega for-profit corporations and to a place where we can give it away for free. It's not an easy task. When I was 18 years old, when that first picture of me was taken, a package came in the mail. Figured, it's my birthday, must be a present. I opened it up to find a razor blade. A Gillette Mach 3, very expensive razor blade, and a sample of shaving cream from the Gillette company. Now, at age 18, I could not afford a Gillette Mach 3 razor. So, and just kind of the fear of razors in general, I continued to use the electric razor that my grandfather had given me to take care of the, you know, little bit of peach fuzz that I actually had. Now, as I got older, started to mature, realized that you know, maybe part of becoming a man is learning to shave with the razor, right? That's the thing to do. And eventually, when I made that decision, I opened the drawer, and in that drawer was the Gillette Mach 3 razor that had been given to me years before. I opened it up, tried it with the Gillette shaving cream that I had also been given, cut myself a few times, wasn't as bad as I thought. And today, 16 years later, I am still a loyal Gillette customer. I spend 30 or so dollars every time I have to refill those really expensive little blades that you get to come with them. But this has been part of my experience, part of my becoming a man, right? And I now have an emotional and personal connection with this company who came in when I could not afford to pay for this and gave it to me for free. Now, I'm willing to bet that many of you in the audience still have the same cellular carrier that you had when you first started having a cell phone. There is a major benefit for the mobile carriers to turn around and provide free access to you. Not only free data for the poor, but free data for everyone, because they can make those profits, those profits that they are currently making on selling to a limited number of people, by utilizing the privacy tax to drive advertising, to get information that we can then use to drive at, uh, products that we would like to purchase. That data can be used to then bring people up where they can themselves become consumers who can pay for products and services who want to click on ads because they want to use the money that they've made. Facebook knows this. This year, Facebook partnered with 18 mobile operators in 14 different countries to provide free mobile data access only to people using the Facebook Messenger service. They get it. Acting in the best interest of humanity can in fact be in the best interest of profit margins. Apps have figured this out. 90% of the top grossing apps in the App Store are free. They make their money through a combination of advertising and in-app purchase and never charge the user for the initial download. Currently, there are four major carriers vying for a giant, giant, very profitable share of the cellular market. The first company that comes out, offers free data, will not only be helping the poor, but will be helping themselves. Thank you.